height, I think we can start. Great, uh, I hope everyone is having a great Sunday. Uh, so today let's talk a bit ab about Mari. So this is going to be more like a global overview of what is Mari. That's not going to be like a step-by-step -step tutorial to see uh, how uh, how you can start your project and such. Like uh, I'm mainly going to talk about what you need to know, why using Mari and uh, and things uh, things like that. So first, a bit of presentation. Uh, my name is Liam. I'm a surfacing lighting TD. Uh, currently working at Worldwide FX as a lighting TD. Uh, if you want just to know a bit about, uh, more about me, I'm going to do a bit of advertisement. Uh, so you can check the channel, the text channel that is just above this channel, streaming voice chat, uh, where I'm going to share share some uh, useful link along uh, the, the presentation. Uh, so right now this is just my personal website uh, and, uh, and there. Uh, what I did also is this. So this is just a quick Notion document that gathers some uh, useful resource. Uh, if you want to check Mary, I'm going to get back on it later. But uh, I put it here for now. And uh, and that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, last uh, year last year I worked on uh, some short movies project. Uh, I shared uh, the art station project in uh, the artwork channel. You can see uh, you can see uh, above. Uh, so this is this project. If you want to check it, it's in uh, the artwork channel. So I pretty use Mari uh, everywhere for a lot of things. I was uh, I did some set surfacing like uh, this cathedral wall. Uh, gate, some props, some characters and such, and everything was done in my learned a lot on this. Uh, but uh, maybe I'll do a project breakdown uh, another time, not uh, not for now. Uh, so, wait, let me find my notes. Uh, uh, okay, so first, why would you want to use Mari? Uh, well, uh, first, because it's an industry standard. Uh, every every big big studio uh, use Mari. Uh, even if so, uh, now nowadays uh, Substance is more and more used, mainly because now it has great UDIM support and as such. But uh, Mari is still there, and uh, I think if you're aiming to find a job as texture artist, uh, you you will have to learn Mari uh, from uh, from one point. Uh, because just it will get you better chance to find a job uh, in the VFX industry, of course. Uh, if you are aiming for the I don't know the video games industry, I don't think Mari is used at all. Never heard about it. Uh, even if a lot of company are using only substance, uh, like uh, I know uh, maybe like some advertisement or uh, cinematic studio like uh, Goodbye Kansas and. Uh, just things that comes to my mind. I, I think they, they, they pretty uh, use uh, substance a lot, but uh, yeah, Mari is used everywhere. Uh, so why why does Mari is more used in the industry than substance? Uh, first, uh, because it's like a tank. You can see it like a tank. It's slow, but it's really reliable, and it allows for a lot of flexibility. Like you can do anything inside uh, Maui, it can eat any model. Uh, there, there is a kind, uh, kind of uh, really great example recently uh, that was discussed on the Maui server. Uh, you can uh, you can see the Maui server in the, the, the resources. There was a discussion about uh, like UDIM counts in uh, in Maui, and there was uh, some uh, artists from uh, digital domain uh, that was uh, sharing his experience on working on the the Changchi, uh, uh, I don't know how to call uh, call this, but uh, the the fortress like on the background that has something like a uh, thousand UDIMs, so yeah, quite a lot. Uh, and this was done in Mari, so yeah, Mari can ingest a lot, lot of UDIMs, and it's not that slow. Let's say that the slow slowness of Mari is kind of constant. Uh, no matter if you have like a thousand UDIMs or two hundred UDIMs, you will get approximately I think the same speed there's just of course some operation that will be longer but that's why Maui is so great it's because it can eat anything like right now here I have a, a, a project open that was my, my biggest one that have something like maybe 100 UDIMs 
and it's a catch it all and uh, yeah yeah uh, once you 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 done something uh, it's it's not that fast but like i can navigate without without you see and i can even tweak uh, tweak some things uh, without problems so yeah that's why maui is great it's because it's it, it can eat anything then of course there is a node graph uh, this is i think the best reason to to use maui instead of substance and what difference uh, them uh, the best like here uh, uh, the, the node graph is so powerful if you, you are used to using node graph I don't know in substance designer in Houdini or anything you know how much nodes are more powerful than, uh, than, than layer and that's one of the best reasons to use Maui and even if you don't like nodes I, I do things you, you, you need to use uh, nodes but we will get on this later and then uh, some other stuff like it's pipeline ready it has a full python api that allows you to do basically anything you could create like a full node graph uh, with python if you want it uh, it can be very well integrated into pipeline and stuff and uh, the, it has very great painting tools i'm not going to dive into the details but like there is a lot lot, lot of lot of tools in maui and even more with the extension pack i'm going to talk about the extension pack later but there is a lot of tools to do like anything the, the only issue is like to find them you need to find these tools uh, but uh, yeah it, it, it can do anything there is some very spo uh, very great stuff like here i may be going to find uh, some paint and uh, there is like warp tool that allow you to warp your painting this is something that miss in substance right now and uh, it's very powerful in Ma in, uh, in Mari you can manipulate your painting layer very easily uh, tweak uh, tweak everything another great thing is like uh, mesh hidings and groups which I think has been added recently into substance uh, but like here for example I have some selection groups that allow me to quickly uh, basically uh, hide what I don't need to work uh, and only focus on the, the best stuff this is very very useful uh, you can even get this one from Maya so you can have the same selection group like in Maya and in Maui which is kind of uh, kind of useful and uh, this is very powerful and there is a lot of useful feature uh, uh, everywhere but the best thing is just to test it to see uh, to see how well it will go for for you uh, just before let's talk a bit about licensing uh, I'm not uh, a guy from Foundry or anything but just so you can know uh, you can know a bit about uh, what to accept from uh, from Maui. Uh, so wait, product. Let's go back to Maui. Uh, so there is quite a lot of license. So you have the non-commercial license uh, that uh, try for free. I can't remember. I think this one. It was this one. Yeah, it was this one. Okay. So you have a lot of license. You have first the non-commercial license that is just free. Uh, you can do anything inside. There is just some limitation, like uh, you're limited to the number of UDIMs. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember how many UDIMs, but something like maybe five or six. Uh, if someone know, knows them, uh, you can uh, you can write it. But uh, yeah, you're mainly limited about the number of UDIMs. But it's very great if you want to start uh, texturing and learning Maui. You can uh, just put some uh, some model with a few UDIMs and start texturing. Uh, it's free. Uh, it's non-commercial, of course, so you can't do uh, professional stuff or anything. But for learning, it is just perfect. And then for the licensing, uh, I think this is the cheapest foundry product. Uh, like uh, you can uh, get a license for 60 by month or uh, 600 a year, which is, I, I guess, okay if you if you're doing some freelancing work. But is of course still kind of quite expensive, but it's not that bad. And also for students, there is an educative license. So this is not only for Maui here, it's for everything. Uh, I need to find it here, yeah. Education Collective, uh, where you can apply if you are a student uh, and you can get basically all the Foundry project for free without any limitation. So if you're a student, just just apply for this because it's just so, so, so good. Even if Foundry is known for having very high price here, it's just so, so, so good to have uh, like a free, free, free Mario product. Like you have Nuke, you have Katana, uh, you have uh, 
uh, yeah, you have, you have everything and it's uh, it, it just great. So have it. And else you have, of course, a 30 day free trial for Maui where you can have uh, an unlimited version for uh, 30 days, uh, which is what I'm using right now because I don't have any more license uh, at my uh, on my personal computer. But uh, yeah, great. A uh, lot of choice for, for licensing. Uh, so uh, let's dive a bit into Maui for now. So first, uh, when you open Maui, uh, you have the project system. Uh, it can be quite confusing at first because like you you will never have to open the file manually on your disk like you, you may do with Substance or anything. It's like you have a hub with uh, all of your projects and your projects are stored at a specific place. You can specify it in the preference. Uh, and uh, and it and uh, yeah uh, the quite tricky thing in is for example if you want to share projects uh, you can't just go into your files and look for your 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 project for example because it's a lot of file uh, that may not work if you share them like this is my Mary folder you can see uh, random names and uh, you just can't share this so there is a a system to create a Maui archive. So this will create a single file, uh, a single file that you can share to anyone, and anyone can open it. It if it has, of course, the right Maui version, and uh, and things. Uh, so this is it for projects. Uh, what you need to know also is that everything is stored into the project, like all of your textures, the model, and anything. Even if it fits no more on your disk, it's in your project, so you don't have to worry about this. Um, so here I have my cathedral project. So as you can see, for now it's quite fast. But yeah, Mary, sometimes when you will start to work, you can it, it can become quite slow to do some modification. For example, here I'm going to dive into it. Like uh, by the way, yeah, uh, just to have a quick look, uh, there is like if you already used Nuke, you will be. Uh, it will be very familiar, but like there is a, this system into the node graph to preview node that is very useful, where you can have uh, the viewer and with the numeric uh, uh, numeric keyboard, you can just press one, two, or three, and uh, you can have different inputs inputs of your model. Like for example, here I have my base color. Here I'm going to press two and have my specular roughness. So it's going to take a bit of time. And uh, yeah, this is very useful stuff that allow you to quickly switch between things. Like for example, here. Let's wait a bit. Yeah, that's going to be the, the issue by showing my stuff. It's going to be quite slow. So here I have my specularness, and I can switch now between both by pressing one or two. So here you go, very, very useful stuff. But yeah, you can see it quite slow. Uh, my recommendation is, of course, to think to install Maui on a SSD. Uh, by uh, is, is there is some performance stuff that you can uh, that you can check and uh, and other. Uh, please do join the Maui Discord because on the Discord, if you look at it, um, into the Maui Fact Channel. Wait, let me find my screen like here here into the Maui fact channel uh, you will be able to find some very useful tips for Maui and like uh, there was even something about performance here F uh, someone from Foundry explained exactly how Maui was working so uh, which uh, hardware into your computer uh, has uh, which importance on Maui so SSD for read write uh, speed which can greatly help uh, so trying to maximize your logs to not having a slow Maui and uh, things like that. Uh, of course, it needs a good GPU to work uh, if you are on a, a, maybe a laptop with a poor graphic card, you will have a hard time using it. Maybe with one UDIMS, it can be OK. Uh, there, there are some tricks to optimize performance to Maui, uh, uh, like it's named the Bakepoint node. It allows you just to bake your node graph into just one node to, to, to simplify performance, but I'm not going to explain it uh, today. 
because uh, well some other people did better than myself so please again do watch uh, the tutorials that are here where some people really explain a lot of useful stuff uh, so yeah uh, then right now I was showing you the node graph, but uh, in Mari uh, I, there is a layer system uh, that is existing. Well, I'm going to. Here you go. So there is a layer system uh, that comes from the uh, old version of Mari before uh, Mari was a layer-based uh, texturing application. Now uh, it has a node graph. And uh, if you think about should I use the layer stack or should I use the node graph, use the node graph. I, I think nowadays there is absolutely no reason to uh, ever use the layer stack uh, back again. Uh, there is still some people that are using it, mainly ma ma mainly character artists, and you may still find some tutorials that explain with the layer stack system. But I think nowadays uh, you are you are just limiting yourself if you're using the layer stack. The, the layer stack and you better start using the node graph system uh, it's so powerful and it, it's just so much fun uh, once uh, you 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 get used to it so use the node graph system um yeah uh, to go uh, a bit about the node graph system i'm just going to share with you another link so this is a small tutorial that is not made by me. Let me find back streaming channel. Ah, just saw the message from Nicety. Told the stream was not loaded pro properly. Anyone uh, else having issue maybe with the stream or it's okay? It's okay. It's just a bit lagging, but okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's Mary that is making my computer dying while I'm streaming and recording at the same time, so <laughs> sorry uh, if there is any lag. As long as you're hearing my voice fine, I think it's good. So uh, here you go, it's uploaded on Mega. It's uh, just a smaller archive with a video and uh, some text. Uh, so it's something that someone from uh, another Discord server showed me. It's name, his name is Vincent Duponchel. Uh, so he is an asset supervisor at uh, Micros, and uh, he shows some very interesting tips from uh, for uh, texturing, uh, for organi uh, sorry for organizing your uh, Maui uh, Maui uh, node graph. Uh, I, I let you download this and see. Uh, and see what uh, what he's what he's explaining but this is like very useful he is using a smart trick to use like backdrop node and such uh, and with a sticky note inside to allow to quickly drag and move uh, move thing i i have it on my project like here it allows you like when you're far away you can just do that and then you click on the sticky note and you can move quickly everything because the sticky note has a huge uh, bonding box, so you can quickly move things. Uh, it's very useful, and I think having a very clean node graph will help you. Uh, will help you just have better texturing for for you and everything. And uh, even if you find some works, uh, your coworkers will like you better if you have a, a more organized uh, node graph. So I think it's very useful to to follow his uh, his organization techniques it just requires the extension pack uh, to have the radio node and such so talking about extension pack uh, i'm maybe going to explain what is what it is so uh, basically it's an extension from for maui like all the features you would like to have in maui and you don't have they are in the extension pack uh, so the link is here so you can have a look uh, so it's a plugin to, uh, you can pay a uh, small uh, small amount uh, i think uh, 60 60 euros for me here is nothing uh, for such features that is bring there is a lot of features uh, you have uh, new nodes uh, you have uh, like uh, is, there is so much thing i i can't tell but like there is really a lot of nodes uh, that are added that are very useful so uh, should you build it? Uh, I think if you're beginning right now, you don't need to build it 
now uh, keep using the keep learning the basics like uh, just follow uh, basic tutorials for 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 now and try to get uh, yourself comfortable around uh, like the basic nodes of mari and when uh, you feel you get enos uh, you you learned enos about mari you can maybe start to see for the extension pack because it will really improve your workflow here the main uh, main cool thing is a radio node that like here if i'm pressing i think i forgot the shortcut it's shift plus air ah, control like here you can see you have this concept of radio node that allow you to hide connection that is uh, very useful to to have uh, kind of organized uh, graph so uh, uh, this is very useful there is a lot of nodes uh, you can use like here I'm using some custom node this one is named Spotify it's someone it's a uh, one from the extension pack so uh, uh, as I said learn the basic first and then uh, if you're really interested in Mari, if you're really interested in texturing and you want to 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 do more uh, about texturing for sure buy the extension pack because it's such it it, it brings so much thing that it it just great so uh, yeah that's what uh, the extension pack is and by the way uh, don't be afraid to like use it a lot now and maybe in studio uh, you would think that uh, you, you won't have access to it but i think nowadays every studio has the extension pack installed uh, because it just brings so much things so uh, you won't get lost if you if you're in a big studio because they will probably have also the extension pack installed so don't worry about this uh, so yeah with all of this combined the extension pack you can do some very useful stuff uh, and a great thing um, maybe what I'm going to show yeah I'm going to start a quick quick project Let, let's close this one this is going to take a bit of time uh, for now what I could talk about uh, yeah I mentioned also Pitex uh, I don't know if you ever heard about this word uh, right, uh, right on top if you did some grooming with Igen you probably heard about it uh, it's just a texture form format from Pixar uh, that is supported in Mari that's, one, uh, that's why it's industry standard because I think uh, it's one of the few tools that support Ptex. Uh, I don't think you have to care about it if you're not using Wonder Man or if you're not doing grooming because, well, it's not supported everywhere. But uh, for grooming, what is very useful is that uh, you can actually paint your uh, grooming ma maps that are that should be Ptex files. Igen is only reading Ptex files, so you can in them in Mari and then uh, with some uh, some some axe you can uh, put them into Xgen and uh, you use it straight it it avoid uh, to have to textures maps into Maya or trying to convert uh, your textures into Maya which sometimes can be kind of clunky and uh, and as such that's also another use case for uh, for Mari so let's create a quick project um, Let's find an asset. Uh, we're going to go from kind of wooden bucket here. Test bucket. Here we go. And for me, uh, you have a few options uh, on the, the menu. I think there is documentation on things for this. Like here, it asks you to, if you want to create a selection group from Maya, the thing you saw on the right. Uh, a bit uh, a bit before yeah I don't need it UV and things so another useful thing is that you can choose what you want to import for example here I know I would not need this channel like here it ask me uh, what kind of template I can use to create my my, my shading uh, there is a lot of supported shaders in in, uh, in Maui uh, but this is I don't think this is something you need to care about for now because uh, you, you will see when I, when I will do a quick example shading is not something I use a lot what what it does is mainly it's for the naming convention of the channels but this is something you can change quite easily so for now like for example you can use the Arnold standard surface uh, the only uh, downside of using this one it 
it has a lot of channel and you will see later why it can be uh, uh, annoying to have so much channel so you can use maybe something like this one that is uh, much more light you can even create uh, yourself uh, a, a shader that is quite complicated and advanced topic but you can even create one like I, I tried to create one for redshift uh, with the redshift naming convention uh, but for now it's still beta and yeah so here I'm just going to let this color setting here I'm just using ASS uh, for this product but I think I could disable it yeah no, I'm going to let it uh, you can load some lighting but we can do this later so create a new project let's see by default it will create some nodes that I always like delete because not useful uh, this is mainly because of the uh, to, to have it working into the layer stack uh, like uh, here you can actually have a node graph that is both working in node graph mode and in layer mode but if you're using only the node graph you it will be nearly impossible to have also the layer stack working but if you really need both to, to, to work together you you can have it but i i don't see so much utilization to so much reason to have both working so for now here is a pretty simple bucket and uh, with basic shader and there is no lighting so yeah quite uh, quite annoying uh, one thing we can do let's open the object so yeah, I'm maybe going to dive this. So this is like your uh, main uh, menu. Uh, yeah, this is a menu for menus, something like we could say that. Uh, so here, I'm just going to object. Here we go. Uh, one thing very useful in Maui is that you can smooth your mesh if you want. For example, here. Ah, just going to hide this one. Okay, so here I can go to this uh, wait let me find it subdivision uh, no I think it was from object subdivide okay subdivision level I think this is an extension pack feature I can't remember but you can basically subdivide your, your mesh into Maui if you didn't already did uh, did it in Maya uh, which allow to have a smooth preview there is like also very useful features uh, into the object stack to just make Maui uh, very powerful you can add version about your mesh like for example here I have only this version but what I can do is now uh, I'm going to add a version so add version this is an extension pack feature too it adds some uh, ND, uh, ND, ND for, I need to be here I think to add it right okay I don't know what it, why it doesn't want to work. But yeah, I think I can change the version form no, for now. But yeah, you can add multiple versions. So for example, if you're working on a character, you can have some like a version uh, that is in typos and another version that like have maybe a mouse open to uh, allow you to uh, texture the inside of the mouse. And what is very useful is that you can just go here and uh, quickly quickly switch between uh, between the version like here you can quickly switch yeah I don't know what why is the fuck yeah I have a lot of hierarchy for nothing here I think I did something wrong when I imported my object uh, this is a thing that can be quite tricky in Maui there is a lot of things that could go wrong and at first uh, you will sometimes press button and everything will go wrong and you will be uh, what the fuck did I just do how do I undo this so this is something that can be quite frustrating at the beginning but you get used to it and uh, so the more you learn Maui the more easy it will uh, it will become uh, of course uh, so I think here yeah it's working level like I can be one and now I have a perfectly smooth bucket and at any time I can tell yeah I don't want the smooth level I want the smooth level uh, not anymore I can of course hide uh, object I can create selection groups if I want as I did it so for example yeah this is things that can be quite complicated for example if you want to select a mesh uh, you have first uh, 
like here, I'm not selecting the mesh, I'm selecting UDIMs. So first, I have to, for example, go here into face mode, then I have to check that I have uh, this smart selection mode activated, like connected mesh, and only here, I can select individual mesh like this. This is why it can be quite complicated because there is sometimes a lot of step to just do something. So here I can do this, I can create, for example, selection group. Let's call it planks, and then I can just hide them like this. Very useful. And uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to show a bit how you can organize your, your how you can start your texturing. For for example, so the first thing I do is always I'll delete all the nodes and just keep my channels node. Uh, so yeah, channels is basically the end of your node graph. It's the things that you you, you have at the end and that will be exported. It just uh, you can create uh, uh, any uh, any number of channel you want. You can find them here also. This is of course coming from the layer stack system, but uh, like I, I basically I think I never use this one, but this is basically linked this one. So like for example here I could add a new channel node. Could uh, name it like uh, yeah maybe ISO mask uh, for for doing some mask yeah maybe going to call it specular choose something scholar data uh, all objects and here I have a new specular channel for example and uh, when I going to export my textures this is what going to appear into my uh, texture list it's these channels so yeah always start with this channel. And then for texturing, you will find a lot of different ways to start texturing depending on uh, which one you are, you, you are looking at. There, there, there is a lot of way to achieve what you want. Uh, but uh, here I'm just going to introduce you some very useful features. There is a material system into Maui uh, that is quite recent. So this is why uh, choosing uh, the white shader at the beginning is important because it will define what material you can create and mat what material you can connect. So for example, here at start, I choose the principal uh, BRDF uh, as a shader. Here it's just a shader. It's just uh, here for uh, viewport preview, but this doesn't affect how my maps are exported or anything like this is just for uh, viewport preview. So now uh, if I create material, I have all my material templates. So here I'm going to keep the same just for the example. Like I'm going to create an empty one. You have a small green node that appears and uh, that have a simple output. But actually, if you expand it, you will see that you have all the channels that are defined here. So uh, that's why, for example, if you use the Arnold standard surface, things are going to get tricky because right now, if I expand it, well, there is a lot of input outputs and uh, it can be quite annoying when you are inside. So uh, control enter to get inside, but I let you watch tutorial to better uh, use material. Here I'm just uh, introducing you the concept of materials. So when you get inside, you have access to uh, s like we could say sub channel uh, that are just output ports. So for example, here I'm going to create, this is one also one of the reasons of why the extension pack is useful, like you have access to this uh, small radial menu that is very useful. Here I can just quickly create a color or else I can just press color and create a node like this. So here I'm just going to create a beautiful red into the base. And as you can see here, I can connect it, it's going to connect me uh, only the top. So uh, it, this is not going to work for specular. For example, here it's going to make me specular. So uh, here I'm just going to connect it like this, for example. So uh, where is metalness? Here, rossness, and as such, we're not going to do them all. And uh, here, as you can see, you have a red, uh, uh, a red uh, ba a bucket. Uh, this is a concept of uh, material, uh, but why it's useful? It's because actually you have only one, uh, you only need to make this manual connection one time. Here we're going to use the multi channel merge, this one, 
that is of course as again working with your material that's why it's kind of important to stick with the same uh, shading system all the way along so here I'm going to expand it to the same like for example here specular metallic and here we go and then what you can do just here I'm going to have my material um, wait which one was uh, yeah no, okay this one was good so here I'm going to create another material for example principal PDF I remove this and here I can quickly merge materials without having to deal with all the connection that's why the material system is really powerful for mixing stuff and here it's a way of texturing I think everyone should have because it's just closer to what's in real life like for example on this bucket uh, I'm just going to disconnect this so we can see better uh, we can say that I have maybe just going to make it a bit darker yeah I like that so we can see something uh, I'm maybe going to have like three materials like here I have a metal for this and uh, maybe for uh, here for, for this part and for the planks I have a wooden material and maybe from here I can do like a fake wheat material maybe uh, that act as a placeholder so we can say that I have three materials so what I can do is I do my three materials like this here it means that I first need to do that's why I'm just going to create another multi-channel merge principle okay so here just in one click there you go then what I can do here is add another one over and here for example I now have my three materials set up that I can uh, quickly rename like for example wood here I can have metal here I can have wheat and then inside I can work on the material so here for example on the wood I'm going to make uh, let's go for this uh, let's go for point material I, so the color picker is kind of fucky uh, here I don't know why it's act like like this so I can make here we're just going to connect it back here you go you have the wood materials uh, so uh, you just have to keep in mind here I'm going to the flow of your materials so now for assigning the material we are going to use for example a paint node uh, here paint node is like it's for making paints it's uh, you, 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 you use it as paint buffer and the advantage is of course you can use it everywhere that's why nodes are so powerful for example here I'm going to plug it here uh, what I can what I can even do here is for example selecting select selection group okay I don't think it's going to work yes it's working I do that then I do that I'm filling it in white and here I have so I have here in the width is the red material uh, that get mixed with the metal material that is empty so it just produces nothing then you go here then here over I put the wood material and then here I have a mask that if I have a look at it you can see that it ah I didn't created it correctly but like here it should be black because there is nothing it's alpha zero and here it's white because there is paint so here alpha one for example and uh, and things like that and then I could reuse this mask everywhere in my node graph uh, to uh, to maybe create something else or we re use it so uh, just have a look at the material system uh, you can find it on the uh, Michael Ward channel uh, this one uh, is explaining the material system uh, very, very it's it's very good so just follow his tutorial uh, I, I think it's very important maybe not important but it's very useful to learn the material system to just craft better things and uh, yeah that was just a quick demo for this um, let me 
uh, let me just look at the streaming voice chat to see if I didn't miss anything. And uh, yes, Chewy Pixels, the stream will be recorded uh, and will probably be posted on RV channel. I guess, I don't know. We will see. And uh, yeah, so material system, very important in my opinion to learn it, uh, at least to understand how it works. So right now, if you never use Mari, you probably are you you are probably very confused because yeah well maybe my way of explaining thing is not the best and Mari can be quite confusing, but I can I can I can assure you that once you get to to past all of this, it can be very pleasing to work with uh, with thing like for example here, maybe going to open this one to show a bit of what it can of what a project can look like and uh, yeah uh, mainly the fact to use node like improve your efficiency and uh, so the way you work uh, it allow for a lot of more of flexibility and even like having quick change if you're uh, working in the industry something that is very important is uh, the 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 if you can do a lot of uh, of variation quickly, like how much time it will take you to change some things and to 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 make variation of your model, and with the node graph, that's why it's so powerful. You can very quickly make some important change. Like here, I could choose to expose some important nodes, and uh, they will do uh, all of this. Like for example, uh, I could expose like a paint node that is. Uh, here exposed like as a mask uh, stains and when someone paint uh, paint on it it will do stains and these stains will interact uh, properly with the material uh, here you can see it's pretty simple like table with metal and uh, wood so I have my materials here wood bath mat just going to open my object here table and this one is probably not used. I didn't rename it. Metal and a rust material for the table. And uh, yeah, and here I have some custom thing. It is this is just a group, and inside the group, like I'm making all of my uh, my mask. So one very handy features here. I yeah I forgot to talk about it is uh, uh, about baking. Uh, this is where substance is going to be useful totally forgot to talk about it sorry uh, yeah for baking uh, this is something that is important because it allows you to build mask uh, procedurally without having to paint anything for, for example here I think I have an AO mask that doesn't seem to work okay yeah don't know why this mask is doing nothing Maybe this one, yeah, okay. So this one is kind of a uh, edge mask that is kind of wipe. Yeah, you can see it here. So I'm using the curvature, so it's always important to have this. The only issue is Maui if is that you, of course, have a baker to do like your curvature maps, ambient occlusion map and such. It's called the model render. The only issue is that it's very, very slow. Uh, you could get some pretty nice bake with it, uh, like here, how curvature and such, but it's just so slow that you probably don't want to use it. So that's why Substance can come handy because you will bake your maps into Substance, like curvature, how position, and everything, and you will be import able to import it into subst into Mari to uh, to use it. Uh, one thing that uh, you should have a look at is uh, Geo Channel. I can't remember where. Maybe Michael White talk about it also uh, I let you I let you see but it's something that is very useful uh, it's called geo channel so geo channel live uh, onto an object so if you have multiple objects you can have multiple uh, here I'm just selecting my object which is my table so I have my geo channel and as you can see here I have imported some of uh, some of this one so for example if I create a new one geo channel here I can click this and import all of my textures and uh, why it is so useful is that now at any moment anywhere into my graph I can create here and come pick for example here my curvature and if I look at this 
I don't have curvature because I probably didn't bake it. <laughs> I don't know why it's not working, but I should have my curvature. Yeah, I think I I think I I shouldn't have switched my version between my project because it's maybe a bit broken. So anyway, here it's a geo channel that I baked to a paint node. And uh, the advantage is yes, you can have uh, like at any time you can pick up very quickly your your maps. So here I'm in the mask builder, but from I don't know what reason, I'm going into the wood material. Here I create a geo channel, and here for example I pick curvature, and here I can use my curvature uh, without uh, without having to deal. And uh, when I want to update it, I just go here. I update my curvature and everywhere it will be updated. That's why Geo Channel thing to learn them because uh, they will be very useful when you have like maybe model uh, model retakes that uh, require to have UV change and you have to rebake all your maps. Uh, UV uh, Geo Channels come very handy here. And uh, of course, I recommend to use Substance Painter to bake your maps because it is just faster uh, than using the model render. If you, of course, you have a substance license, else you might want to have a look at the 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 model under Baker for for your maps. Uh, but you will see it's quite slow, but produce good results. And uh, yeah, that's one of the points I totally forgot to talk about. Hope I didn't forget others. And uh, yeah, nearly one hour, I think. We can uh, I, I can left this here. So this was kind of messy global view of how Maui allow you to do some things and how Maui works. But yeah, it's very complex. Uh, I don't want to scare anyone. But yeah, take notes if you if you're trying to learn because yeah, there is kind of a lot of shortcuts. There is a lot of things that are linked uh, between them. Uh, you have all of this uh, this uh, this channel that some of them are paid or free that could help you to to better understand Mari. But at the end, it's very worthy uh, to say no. I I just can't texture any asset on Substance. Like I I just don't feel it. Uh, like all of these small props like this table, I could have done it on Substance because it would probably have been quicker. But like I'm just used now to the Mari not graph. I just like it so much and. Uh, it it's just so good to 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 work with uh, with the node graph. So yeah, I would definitely recommend to to use Mari. And uh, and think yeah, Johnny just tmd me about projects and painting. I'm going to make a quick example. Uh, that would be cool. Uh, let's create paint, black paint, for for uh, yeah. Also something that is very useful is you can have a resolution different per paint. You even have to 32k uh, texturing uh, if you have the machine that follow. I think you can do 32k, but let's not touch this one, else your PC probably is going to die. So here I have a black paint, and let's say I want maybe on the top of this table do some wipes mark uh, because there are some people that put something. Here I have like my uh, my my textures. By the way, all of these textures are. Imported, they, they, they doesn't exist uh, in uh, in Mari. Uh, here, ah, here, these are extension pack uh, grunge, uh, so you can have some of them. But here, else, these are all textures that I imported, uh, which can be uh, compared to Substance, where you have like a default library or of a lot of things. Here, you can have like have to build a lot more. So here, I'm going to use, for example, this one. I'm going to drag it here. And here, like this, we're going to make a quick projection and have some white marks. So here, I'm maybe going to change the blending mode to add to avoid doesn't work. Please, yeah, it decided. It doesn't want to change the blending mode. Anyway, uh, you can have a quick look. And for example, here I have my paint layer. What is uh, kind of uh, pertur per perturbing maybe at at first? Uh, that is kind of weird. Is that your paint better paint uh, paint buffer? I'm 
going to make it. Paint buffer is uh, not baked like here. I can move my model and uh, choose to to put it anywhere after. This is at the same time quite frustrating because you're painting, you're moving, and oh fuck, I didn't forgot. Uh, uh, I didn't bake my paint layer, so I have to. to you, luckily, you can just uh, undo uh, everything and get back to your original position. And here, for example, I'm going to make this. I'm going to add it, and like for example here, now I can warp my paint layer as I want. I can move it, then I say I bake it, I press B, it's baked, it's on my model, and now I have my uh, my uh, my swap. So yeah, projection tools, uh, here it's a very simple example, but they are very powerful, you have a lot of uh, way to do this, um, you even have of course uh, the, gray, the clone stamp, I don't think I ever use it. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of tools for painting that are just so smooth and so good to use. Some of them are in Substance Painter, but you you doesn't have the flexibility that Maui offer to, to paint models. That's why a lot of character artists just prefer using Maui for projection, for projection stuff uh, and uh, things like that. Uh, but well, uh, yeah, I think that was it. If I don't forget any big things, but uh, yeah, hope you, you you had a global overview of uh, what is uh, what is Mari, or it can bring improve your workflow uh, maybe, or just maybe allow you to get job into the industry. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is for me. I don't know if you have time to maybe make uh, a question uh, question time. Uh, what do you think about it, uh, Johnny? Sure, go ahead. Absolutely fine. So, if anyone have have some specific question, you could maybe ask them in streaming vo voice chat. Um, I'm going to try to answer them, or maybe if anyone else has the answer. Uh, so yes, go ahead if you have some question. What software? Okay, Nazdi is asking what software do you use Mari with? Uh, for me, the last thing I did, the project I worked on, uh, I used Katana uh, and Redshift to work with Mari. That was the final rendering was done with Katana and Redshift. Uh, but if you mean like what other software you can do uh, at the same time for texturing, uh, I also use Substance Designer. Uh, actually, which is kind of funny is that the extension pack uh, really brings a lot of nodes that could allow you to do like a lot of things you can do into Substance Designer. You can also do them in Maui thanks to the extension pack. But uh, I, the Substance Designer is so much better at creating procedural textures that, yeah, sometimes I, I, I'm just like, uh, yeah, I need these textures. I don't have it in my library. I go to Substance Designer, I create it, then I import it in Maui. And uh, now I have it in uh, in Mari. I can keep uh, doing my texturing. So I use Substance Painter for baking. Uh, yeah, Mighty Bake. Uh, Johnny is sharing Mighty Bake. I never use it, but I think it's great too. Uh, if you don't want to spend some dollars on a substance uh, substance license uh, just to bake some mesh, I think this will do the job properly to import uh, all of your bakes into uh, into Mari. And uh, yeah, for for Wonder Engine, uh, yeah, Maui can work with, of course, anything. Uh, it just you have maybe at first to do a lot of back and forth between your Wonder Engine and your texturing software to be sure that your maps are exported properly. They react how you should do. Uh, yeah, maybe just a last point that comes to my mind uh, because we are talking about Wonder Engine. Just a viewport preview. Uh, I, this is something that I very uh, myself barely use. Uh, like uh, most of the time, I don't use the shaded preview. I only use uh, uh, like a single channel preview, uh, or I'm previewing only the diffuse, or I'm maybe previewing only my mask, uh, my material, and things. But I very, uh, I, I kind of never use the full preview, like where you can see the normal, the worstness and everything that interact, because first it's very slow. Like here, it's mean it have to compute all the channel, but here you have it. 
Uh, and uh, first, it's not very high quality. That's one of the main advantage of Substance is that it has a very high quality viewport that you can texture inside and see your preview in real time. But in Substance, uh, in Maui, sorry, uh, this is I don't like working with it. I only use it sometimes to look at my normal map uh, because it's really hard to work on a normal map just looking at blue values. Uh, it's kind of tricky, so sometimes I use the shaded preview. But finally, you get used to like working only by looking at your channels. And I think, in a way, it kind of improves your texturing because you, you are not biased by, by I, I don't know, the, the viewport, the lighting or anything. You're only looking at the raw values. So for example, when I work my hostness, I kind of only look at here the hostness channel and see how uh, this one should be a little darker to have like maybe uh, less hostness. This one should be whiter to have more hostness, like you can see here. Like uh, maybe this doesn't have enough variation. Like here, if I look it from this distance, I could maybe tell myself, oh, there is maybe not enough variation on top of this. Like it's all of the same color uh, instead of maybe looking at the shading preview where you will less feel uh, what's missing inside. So uh, yeah, shading preview, uh, see if you want to work with, but actually I think it's maybe a good habit to start working only by looking at your uh, individual channels uh, to see your texturing. And uh, yep, does anyone else have other question? And I hope I answered your question nicely. Ah, okay, so we wonder, don't worry, there will be a replay that will be posted. So you could have a look at it. Uh, so Suita is asking, when texturing a face with two or more maps for height and bump, is there any specific way to visualize visualize it. Uh, I, I don't understand what you mean by two or more maps for eight and bump. Uh, do you mean like you want to get an eight, uh, an eight texture and a bump texture, like two texture? Because in my mind, like they are the same thing, they just have a, a different name. But like, uh, yeah, this is just naming convention that can be quite confusing. But for example, here, uh, in Substance, I, this could be called my 8, here it's my displacement, but I could also name it my bump map. It's all depend how you use it into your render engine at the end. But it's kind of the same thing, It's uh, in that case it's grayscale values that are uh, representing the elevation uh, of your object. So uh, for, uh, I don't know, uh, if you put uh, Black values, it means you are uh, doing a slope. Uh, and if you are uh, putting white value, it means you are uh, doing an elevation. Uh, so uh, it goes up and black go down. Uh, so I think that's pretty the same for height, bump and displacement. But if I have to work like with different map, like this, I would know I would use it as a displacement map into my texturing. And then I could create a channel that I could use call bump and only use as a bump map into my uh, my render engine uh, later. So I have my displacement, my bump, and I maybe not be using any normal map. But I, I don't think I, I got what you mean by uh, your question. Hey Wonder House, I, I, I would recommend you to have a look at the replay on is posted. It's something I have explained. Uh, if you scroll a bit up, there is a link that is called uh, Maui Resource that gets you to a notion where I posted a lot of resources uh, to start with Maui. Uh, you have the official Maui channel that uh, have some tutorials on it. Uh, I think Michael White channels have a lot of good stuff on it. Uh, you have even some course here uh, from Zach Boxal, Maui Texting Tutorial, which is a from scratch tutorial, for example. Uh, here, these are more channels that like uh, answer to specific question. I think Altwist Digital also have some maybe beginner tutorials. So see from this channel where what can you can you see to 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 start learning uh, Maui. Ah yes okay I see what you mean yeah it just 
the node graph way. So for example here, let's do it. So let's say we have here some scratches. I'm importing it as style and here we have some stains, kind of stains. So like this. So here Yeah, thanks everyone. I hope you hope you liked it. And it was not so confusing. I maybe should have prepared a little bit more about what I'm going to talk. I think it was a bit more confusing. Just answering the Siri tax question. So here you can see I have my scratching texture. Here I have another one. Like stains. I'm just going to tile it tiled it a little bit more. Three three like this. So here they are separated, but like you use a merge node, which is like you you will use it all the time merge node, and here uh, this does nothing because it just um, merge node with opacity right now like it's one or the other a on b or a or b but I could use a blend mode like for example I could use add blend mode that like here mean that I'm going to add the over on top of the base but only keeping the white values so here I could add both on top and they have the light values and this is how you can build uh, all of your texturing later uh, using blend mode and uh, merge uh, Stephanie G Jedi is asking, may I ask if you suggest a lighting TD to be super familiar with Maui? Uh, well, I don't think a lighting TD need to be super familiar. I don't think anyone at job will ask you, but like if you know how to use Maui, uh, this could probably help maybe debugging uh, things that could not work later in the pipeline. But uh, I don't think it's super necessary. Uh, probably some uh, being able to do some look dev into uh, some wonder engine like Arnold or anything is useful but I don't think Maui is necessary for 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 lighting TD you will probably not touch it but it's just good practice to to know how the other department works uh, when so when you have an issue you you're more able to react quickly and uh, know what to do well I think that's it. Uh, yeah, a bit more than one hour. Uh, hope you find some good tips inside and uh, that you enjoy the presentation. Thanks everyone for coming and uh, we'll keep you updated on the replay for those who want to watch it and uh, hope you have fun with uh, with uh, Maui and don't forget to share or ask uh, ask your question into general CG. A lot of people will be able to answer and help you uh, going further. So, yep, thanks everyone for coming.